Okay, welcome to our WEN6 review for our upcoming test on Thursday. I'm going to be going through the review that I gave you on Monday, and I'll be identifying, you know, how to solve each of the problems on that review so you can get prepared for the test. We're going to go ahead and jump right in with this first um, set of problems, one through four. They deal with a data table for velocity and time. You can see that there are four different cars, car Q, R, S, and T, and they're undergoing different types of acceleration. So if you read number one, it says using the above table, which car shows an acceleration of five meters per second squared. So again, these are velocities, these values that are in the data table. And what we're looking for is that with each time increment increase here from one to two, three to four, four to five, um, that you see that the velocity here would be changing by five because it's a five meter per second squared um, acceleration, we're going to expect that the velocity would change by five every single second um, that you go by. So car R is the best choice for number one, because you can see that it goes from zero to five to 10 to 15 to 20. So you have increments of five here, and so that matches what we need. For number two, which one has a negative acceleration? Remember, a negative acceleration, if we're assuming you're going in a positive velocity here, we're going to the right, a negative acceleration would be slowing us down. So if you look at cars Q through T, the best choice for this would be car T because you can see that it's actually slowing down with a negative acceleration. Um, and if we wanted to find out what that acceleration is, you can see that it's going down by one every second. So it would be negative one meter per second squared. For number three, which one has a zero acceleration? That would be a car that was maintaining a constant velocity. And if you look at the car choices up here, car Q is the best choice for that because it maintains a velocity of three meters per second at every time interval. Number four, which has an acceleration of two meters per second squared? Again, same principle as number one, we're looking for a car like car S because you can see that its velocity is changing by two meters per second every second. So from 12 to 14, that's a two meter per second increase and then it continues on that path all the way through the five seconds. Okay, so that's one through four. And if you move on to number five, you'll see that it's an actual problem for acceleration. And I've already gone through it, but we'll, we'll talk about exactly what's going on here. So it says, determine the acceleration of a zebra that is traveling 12 meters per second, which accelerates to 19.3 meters per second in 2.75 seconds. So you can see that I've labeled all the given information here. The initial velocity is given to you at 12 meters per second. The final velocity is given to you, and the time is given to you. You're looking for acceleration. There are two equations here that solve for acceleration. The one that I've circled is the one we're going to go with, but there's also this other one down here for acceleration. The reason that I've chosen the one I circled is because you can see that in our word problem, they do not ask you for or they do not give you anything about displacement, delta x. There's no delta x up here, and you can see that this other acceleration equation uses delta x right here. And because it uses delta x, that's going to make it to where we can't use it to solve for acceleration. So using this equation that I've circled, we're going to fill in our values. Final velocity was 19.3 minus the 12, our initial velocity, divided by the time it takes. And when you plug all that into your calculator and simplify it, you get 2.65 meters per second squared. Number six, what is the acceleration of a car that is traveling at 85 miles per hour and slows to 55 miles per hour in 3.78 seconds? To find the acceleration for this car, again, you point out the given information, it's gonna be initial velocity was 85, the final velocity is 55, and the time it takes is 3.78 seconds. Out of the acceleration equations we're given, we're going to go with that first equation again. Again, for the same reason, the fact that they do not give us delta x displacement anywhere in this problem. So it wouldn't be wise to choose this equation. One thing you have to do with this word problem before you can actually put in any numbers into the equation is you can see that time is actually in seconds. You need to convert that into hours. So that was the first thing I did here. I took 3.78 seconds. I divided it by 60 because there's 60 seconds in a minute. And I divided it by 60 again because there's 60 minutes in an hour. And that converted my 3.78 seconds into 0 .001 hours. 
And then you can use this time in the first equation, here in the denominator, and you can take the 55 miles per hour, your final velocity, minus your initial velocity of 85, divided by that time to find out that your acceleration is negative 30,000 miles per hour squared. It's a really, really fast deceleration. Okay, number seven. How far will a car travel as it slows from 65 meters per second at an acceleration of negative 33.5 meters per second squared for a period of 3.45 seconds? So in this problem, we're looking for displacement and we're given the initial velocity acceleration in time. We can see that we actually have um, three different choices. We have this equation down here on the bottom left. We have the one I circled, and then we have this one down here in the bottom right. And the reason that I've chosen the one I have is because it uses initial velocity acceleration in time, whereas this one doesn't use time over here. And then if you look at this example over here on the bottom right, this one doesn't use acceleration. So these two problems are missing one key component that we have in our word problem, whereas this one has all four you know, variables that we're looking for. It has delta x, it has initial velocity, time, and acceleration. So this is going to be the best choice for us. When we take these numbers and plug them into the equation, you're going to have to do a lot of simplification. There's a lot of math going on here. The most important thing to mem remember is to do the order of operations. I like to do the stuff on the left, stuff on the right, and then add them together afterwards. If you try to plug all of this in, sometimes the calculator can mess up the order of operations if you don't put parentheses in the right spot. So when you do that, you end up with 224.25 for this left value. And on the right, you should actually practice this. You end up with negative 20.83. And when you add those together, you get a displacement of 203.42 meters for how far this car traveled. Number eight, a car travels at 25 meters per second and accelerates at 6.7 meters per second squared over a distance of 400 meters. What is the final velocity? You can see the given information here is that it initially started at a speed of 25 meters per second. It accelerated at 6.7, so that's your acceleration. And your displacement is going to be the 400 meters. For final velocity, you can see that we actually have two choices. We have the one I've circled and the one on the top right. The reason that we're going with the one I circled is because you can see that they do not have time anywhere in our word problem. And this equation on the top right for final velocity uses time. So there'd be no way for us to use that equation to solve for final velocity for this problem. Because we have these other four variables that are all present in this equation, it's the best choice. So when you plug in your numbers, instead of initial, for initial velocity, you'll put 25 meters per second squared, plus you'll have over here two times A, which is 6.7 meters per second squared, our acceleration, times our displacement, which is 400 meters. When you simplify all this, you get 5,985, but because we have a VF squared here, we have to square root both sides to get rid of the square. And you end up with VF equals, after you square root the 5,985, you end up with um, 77.36 meters per second. Again, it's really important that you actually do the math on this with your calculator. You know, getting practice with doing that and not just copying all this stuff down. It's okay to understand it, but it is another thing to, to, to practice doing it. So it's important you actually do this on your calculator and, um, you know, make sure that you're getting the right values here. Number nine and 10 are coming from a velocity versus time graph. So number nine says, what is the velocity of the car at eight seconds? You can see velocity is on our y-axis and time is on our x-axis. And if you come over here to 8 seconds on the x-axis, you just follow this up to the line. You'll see that it hits the line at around 40 meters per second on the y-axis. So our velocity of the car would be that 40 meters per second. Number 10, what is the acceleration of the car between 4 and 8 seconds? Really important concept here, guys. The slope of a velocity versus time graph is acceleration. So to find the acceleration of the car between four and eight seconds, you find the slope. Again, that's going to be rise over run. So the rise here is from 20 to 40, which is 20 meters per second. That's our rise. Divided by the run, which would be from four to eight, 
total of four seconds. 20 divided by four gives you your acceleration of five meters per second squared. Number 11, what is the acceleration of an object with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second that experiences an acceleration over 4,500 meters and reaches a final velocity of 65 meters per second? So on this problem, we have the acceleration is what we're looking for. You're, you've been given the initial velocity. You know that the displacement is 4,500 and the final velocity is 65. If you look at the equations for acceleration that we can use, we've got this first top left one, and then we have this bottom middle one for acceleration. And the bottom middle one's the best choice because you can see in our word problem, they do not use time. So the top left choice would not be a good one for us. This is the best choice because it doesn't use time. When you actually plug the numbers in, Again, some simplification stuff here with math. You need to be very careful because you've got your final velocity of 65 squared minus your initial velocity squared. Um, very important you do this correctly in your calculator. And when you subtract those two values, you can see I've done each one individually and then subtracted them. That would probably be the safest bet for you. And when you do that, you divide by your denominator of 9,000. You get an acceleration of 0.4 meters per second squared for this object. Number 12, what is your displacement if you have an initial speed of 13 and accelerate a steady rate of 54 meters per second and a time interval of 11.5 seconds? You can see that in this problem, we're not given the acceleration. And out of the choices for displacement, this one right here um, in the top middle and then the bottom left, both of those use acceleration, whereas the one that I've circled does not use acceleration. Again, acceleration isn't here, so we need to pick the equation that does not use acceleration. When I plug my values in from the word problem, I'm going to put, instead of time, I'll put 11.5 seconds, and then I'll put my final velocity of 54 plus my initial velocity of 13. Simplify this in your calculator, and you'll get 385.25 meters. Number 13. A ball is dropped from a ledge that is 40 meters off the ground. What is the final speed of the object as it hits the ground? So in this problem, this is one of the free fall acceleration problems. We know the acceleration of gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's one of the givens we have to know, even though it's not put into the word problem. That's our acceleration. The other thing we need to know is that because the ball was dropped from a ledge, its initial velocity is going to be equal to zero. We also need to know that the 40 meters, the height or displacement in the y direction is going to be negative because it's being dropped down. So knowing that information and that we're trying to find our final velocity, the choices we have available to us are this one that I've circled in the top right. Because they haven't given us time, this would not be, an, a, be a good equation to use. You can see that time is used here. The one I've circled does not use time, so we'll get our values and plug them in. You'll end up with Vf squared equals 0 squared plus 2 times the acceleration of gravity, which is negative 9.8. Instead of A, we use the negative 9.8 times negative 40. Again, you have to make this height negative because we are falling downwards. So negative 40 meters. You get 784. And to get rid of this square on the Vf, you have to square root both sides. And you get a value for your final velocity of 28 meters per second. Number 14, another free fall acceleration problem. It says a ball is thrown up at an initial velocity of 32 meters per second. And it's caught at a height that you need to determine. So in this case, we're assuming that that height is when it's at its maximum height. And that would mean that its final velocity is equal to zero. Again, because it's free fall, we know that acceleration of gravity is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And our initial velocity would be 32 meters per second. So out of our delta y values, again, this says delta x, but we're talking about height now. So we're going to just pretend like that's delta y. So out of these three equations, the best one to use is going to be the one that does not use time. And you can see that these two equations use time. And I say that because in our word problem, there was no time given to you. So this one over here will be our best choice, the bottom left, again, because it doesn't use time. When you plug in our numbers, 
for the given, you would end up with our final velocity squared of zero minus our initial velocity 32 squared divided by two times the acceleration of gravity. When you simplify that, you end up with a positive 52.24 meters as the maximum height that this ball would be caught at. Number 15, what is your final velocity if you're at a red light and accelerate for 7.5 seconds at an acceleration of 3.2 meters per second squared? So in this case, you're gonna be using the fact that you know you're at a red light as your initial velocity of zero. You know the time is 7.5 seconds and you know the acceleration is 3.2 meters per second squared. Out of our final velocity equations that are given to you, the best choice would be the one that I've circled because it uses time this other final velocity equation does not use time, so it wouldn't be a good choice for our setup here. It uses delta x instead of time. So when we use this equation and we plug in our numbers, you'll end up with an initial velocity of 0 plus my acceleration of 3.2 meters per second squared times my time of 7.5 seconds. That gives you a final velocity for this car after the acceleration of 24 meters per second. Number 16, what is the acceleration of a plane that travels at 32 meters per second and speeds up to 59 meters per second over 11,000 meters? So for this plane, they do not give us the time it takes. And out of the acceleration equations that you've been given, this top left one you can see uses time, whereas this one that I've circled does not use time. So we can get our values for final velocity of 59 meters per second, square it, minus my initial velocity of 32 meters per second squared divided by 2 times my distance or displacement which is 11,000 meters in this case. When you simplify all of this you'll end up with 0.112 meters per second squared as our acceleration for this plane over this very long distance. Number 17. <laughs> What distance is covered as one accelerates at 4.5 meters per second squared, going from an initial velocity of 20 meters per second to a final velocity of 45 meters per second? So you can see here that we're looking for distance or displacement. And in this case, there are three choices. The best one for us is going to be this one that I've circled because you can see it does not use time, whereas these other two equations use time. We do not have time in our word problem, so they wouldn't be good choices. The best choice is the one that does not use time. So whenever you plug in our values from the equation for initial velocity, acceleration, and final velocity, you end up with 45 squared minus my initial velocity of 20 squared divided by 2 times my acceleration of 4.5. When you simplify this in your calculator, you should end up with this next step and a final result of 180.6 meters. Number 18, a stuntman, stuntman falls off a cliff that is 60 meters high. What is his velocity as he hits the ground? It's going to be a free fall problem, so we know because he's falling that he's under free fall. He has an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Because he's falling off the cliff, we're going to assume he had an initial velocity before when he first fell off the cliff of zero. And we're going to assume because he's falling downwards that his displacement in the y direction is negative. Now, the one thing missing in our problem is time. Um, there's no time given to us, and we need to find the final velocity. So out of these two choices for final velocity equations, the one I've circled and the one on the top right, the best one to use is the one I've circled because it does not use time. When I plug in my initial velocity of zero, square it, plus two times my acceleration of gravity, times negative 60 meters because we are falling on making that 60 meters negative. You end up with 1,176. Because it's squared, we have to take the square root of both sides to get rid of that square. You end up with a final velocity of 34.29 meters per second when you simplify. The final word problem, a rifle shoots a bullet straight up at a velocity of 300 meters per second what is the highest point that the bullet will reach? So we're looking for the delta y, the displacement in the y direction, that highest point. 
And because we know it's at its highest point, we know the final velocity at that highest point is equal to zero. We know our initial velocity was 300 meters per second. And because this bullet was shot straight up, we know the acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, the acceleration of gravity. I've chosen this bottom left equation for my displacement in the y direction because you can see that these other two delta x equations, or in this case delta y because we're dealing with height, they both use time, whereas in my word problem I'm not given time, so the best choice would be this bottom left one. When you plug in your numbers, you would have a final velocity of 0 squared minus 300 meters per second squared, your initial velocity, divided by 2 times the acceleration of gravity will give you a total height for this object after you simplify for this bullet actually is going to be 4,591.8 meters. Okay, so one of the other things included on this um, review are some graphs that compare what a stationary object looks like what a uniform motion object looks like, and a motion with constant acceleration look like on different graphs. This is going to be important to memorize, so you know that for a stationary object on a position time graph, that's going to be a flat line. On a velocity time graph, an object that's stationary would be a flat line at zero. And then for an acceleration time graph, it would be a flat line at zero as well. For an object undergoing uniform motion, which is motion without any acceleration, you would have um, a line that had a constant slope. So on a position time graph, the velocity would be shown as a constant slope. On a velocity time graph, it would be a flat line that is not at zero. So you can see that this is a flat line that isn't on the x-axis. And then for acceleration, it would also be at zero for uniform motion. So you can see for a stationary object and uniform motion, the acceleration graphs look the same. For motion with constant acceleration, so this is a uniform acceleration um, that's speeding up the object. You can see that on a position time graph that looks like um, a quadratic. And then over here, it looks like a simple line on a velocity time graph. On the acceleration graph, that looks like a horizontal flat line at whatever acceleration you were, you, you were at. So on a distance time graph, quick review. You guys know that um, we actually did this at the very beginning of the school year, but whenever it's curved like this going up, that shows that you're actually increasing your speed at a faster rate. So this is an acceleration right here at the beginning. This um, linear constant motion right here would be a constant speed. And then where it curves back to more horizontal uh, flat plane would be slowing down. And then where it becomes flat at the top would be stationary. The last image that you're given is a velocity time graph, and we spent some time with this um, using the iPad and, and recording people's motion. So you know that whenever you have a line that is constantly moving away from zero, that would be an acceleration. Um, here you can see that because this slope is less than the next one, that it's accelerating slowly, but then quickly because it's got a steeper slope. Whenever it's a horizontal line, that means that you're staying at the same speed that whole time. So that's a steady speed, constant speed. When you get back closer to zero, remember zero is the x-axis right here. So as you go back down towards zero, this would be an object slowing down. When you stay at zero for any amount of time, that shows that you've been stopped. When you move downwards, Remember, below zero on velocity and time graphs, if you're below zero, so you have a negative velocity here, that means that you have a negative direction. So this would be an example of a car speeding up in the opposite direction. And then when it stays flat here, this means it's still going in the opposite direction, but it's staying at the same speed the whole time. Okay, so that's going to conclude your WIN 6 review for this upcoming test. If you have any questions, you're welcome to come to tutoring um, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in the morning. I'll be available. And then if you need to make special arrangements to come in the afternoon or during your lunch, fine with that. Just make sure you talk with me. 
and that's it for this review.